Good morning, everyone. I hope you are having a great day so far. Today, we are going to be reviewing equivalent fractions. So, um, let's remember that equivalent fractions are just fractions that equal the same amount. Okay? So, remember when we first started looking at equivalent fractions, we looked at a sheet like this. And we talked about how we could look straight down our number line to find these equivalent fractions. So, with my blue, I'm just going to highlight all the fractions that are equivalent to one half. And again, I'm just going to come straight down my number line. Just like this. Um, and I can see that all of these fractions are equivalent to one half. So 2 fourths, 3 six, and 4 eighths are all equivalent, meaning they're going to rep represent the same amount. Um, now I want to look at 1 fourth, and I'm going to do that 1 fourth in green. So again, I'm just going to go straight down my number line and look at these equivalent fractions. So I'm going to highlight them in green. So I can see that 2 eighths is equivalent to 1 fourth because they're coming straight down that number line. Now for 3 fourths, I'm going to do this in this pink color. Again, just like before, I'm going to come straight down. My number line and just see what I highlight so I see that 6 eighths would be equivalent to 3 fourths all right coming down a little bit we talked about finding equivalent fractions with some shapes and to do this I'm looking at my shaded part um, so on the left I see that my circle is divided into one two three four pieces so over here I'm gonna put my denominator of four and I see that one piece is shaded out of those whole so I'm gonna put one fourth looking over here on the right I see that my circle is divided into one two three four five six seven eight so I know that eight is going to be the denominator because that is how many pieces make up my whole and I can see that two pieces are shaded so I could say that one fourth is equivalent to two eighths. Again, you should be able to see that um, with this eighth circle, you could divide this eighth into four. I'm going to do that in red so it kind of stands out. So you could see that this shaded yellow portion would be one fourth, but you could also take this circle on the right and you could divide it into eights and I'm gonna do that in red for us so you could see that just like that so again if I was dividing that into eights um, you could see that there was gonna be two pieces in this fourth that would be become eight so one fourth is equivalent to two eighths. All right, so down here, um, we can see that we have two rectangles. Um, I see that one of the rectangles is gonna be divided up into thirds. So over here, I'm gonna put three on my denominator and I can see that two pieces are shaded. So I'm gonna put two thirds and my bottom rectangle, I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Put six on the bottom, and I have one, two, three, four pieces shaded. So I could say that two thirds is equivalent to four six. And another way for us to visualize that is I'm going to draw our red lines because sometimes we're going to have to visualize these fractions. So for instance, they may just give you the bottom one, and they may say, like, how can you make equivalent fractions with this? So you have to be able to visualize that you could also divide this rectangle up into thirds. So now my bottom rectangle would be thirds to three, right? Or they might just give you the top rectangle and ask you, 
how you could create an equivalent fraction with this shape. And again, with that one, you could divide it up into six, like we just saw. So one, So meaning we would have six parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. So two thirds is equivalent to four six. All right, coming down, coming down to our number lines. Okay, with these, we are looking for equivalent fractions. So um, we could say that I'm going to change this color. If I wanted to find an equivalent fraction to 3 fourths, if it gave us two number lines, I could look straight down and see that 6 eighths would be equivalent. But what if they didn't give us two number lines? What if they just gave us one number line now, let's pretend that they just gave us this bottom number line. In fact, I'll just get rid of this top number line. Just get rid of it. Okay, so let's pretend they just gave us this bottom number line. And they wanted to ask us to find, and let's use a different fraction, a uh, fraction equivalent to 2 eighths. So... To do this, I would need to be able to divide up my number line into smaller pieces. So with my green, so I am going to want to divide my number line up into fourths to try and get an equivalent fraction. Um, so I would divide it in the middle, so that gives me two sections. But I still see that I don't have an equivalent fraction to 2 eighths. So I would need to come over here and divide it over here. Now, these green marks, 1, 2, 3, 4, these green marks could be fourths. So if I wanted to label my fourths, I could go 1, fourth, 2, fourth, and 3, fourths. Okay, so then I would be able to see that this one fourth and two eighths are going to be equivalent. And if you wanted to double check your work, you could use our butterfly method or cross multiplying. But I'm just going to do that up here. So I could take one fourth and two eighths. Cross multiply four times two is eight. And I could have one times eight. 8. Well, I see that 8 and 8 is equal, so these are equivalent fractions. Alright, coming down to the bottom. So these we have to find, we have to create our equivalent fractions. So I have to figure out how they went from a denominator of 3 to a denominator of 6. Well, if I know my multiplication facts, I know that they took 3 times 2 to give you 6. So whatever I do to the bottom, I know I have to do to the top. So I need to multiply by 2 on the top. So then I'm just going to multiply straight across my numerators. 2 times 2 is going to be 4. And then we know that 3 times 2 is going to be 6. So 2 thirds is equivalent to 4 6. And over here on the right, I need to figure out how they went from a denominator of 8 down to a denominator of 4. So I'm not going to be multiplying because I see that my number goes down. So I think I must be dividing. I'm making this number smaller. So I know I'm going to be dividing by something. Well, 8 divided by what is going to give me 4? 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. So I know that I have to also divide by 2 on the top. Because whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1. And we know that 8 divided by 2 is 4. Remember, when we make fractions smaller like this, we are 
simplifying. Simplifying. Okay, we're making them smaller. So, there is a quick little review on equivalent fractions. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow.